tell you how to optimize and maximize your pension. Obviously, that depends on you and your life and what you want to do, how much you love your work, where, what are the opportunities you have. There isn't, there isn't a right answer, but there are facts from which you can choose. All right, and my suggestion, if you do have an appointment, is bring your social security information. We can give you kind of some heads up in regards to the windfall and the governmental pension offset. We yeah. talked about the governmental pension offset, which affects uh, SERS members who are entitled or expecting a benefit from a Social Security recipient. Basically, as Arlene mentioned earlier, if you are entitled to Social Security and you've earned SERS, um, if you reach your normal age for retirement in Social Security, which is 66 or 67, depending on your year of birth, I shouldn't say start the Social Security benefit, but definitely consider beginning to receive it at that time because if you are affected by the windfall elimination provision, it will be cut. And most people consider the fact that, well, I've got the deferred credits and I'll wait until I'm 70 and receive a larger benefit, but then that benefit is eventually going to be cut. So you have to evaluate, if I can receive a full Social Security benefit from 66 to 70 and then deal with the reduction, and I can fully fund my 403B or my deferred compensation program, which you can contribute up to $24,500 to each plan. So you've got 403B, you've got deferred compensation, and at the time of retirement, after you leave the system, you can aggregate all of this into a personal IRA or a, you know, either, either one or the other of those plans. Okay, so give you some options. I was just going to say that um, if anybody's as old as me, um, when I was first hired, um, they gave you the option, actually, of not contributing to the retirement system for three years. Right. Yep. And uh, so I took that option. And I thought, well, I'm not going to be I'm, old. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not ever going to retire, and I'll probably never be here. <laughs> and um, so what I did is, uh, a long time ago, I decided, well, maybe I am going to be here. And I bought those three years back. And I did it by transferring in an IRA, a small IRA I had. And it goes up the longer you wait. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, it's best to do it as soon as you can. Later. Yes. And, um, and then the, I, I think it's probably, we probably still have this, but the other two years I did on payroll deduction. Yep. So they take a little bit out of your check every month and then you pay it back over time. Yeah. Um, on a different topic, and I think Mark might be the one with this. Uh, What's all this about you can be rehired? What are the glitches? And what's the 60 days uh, that you cannot work on campus? Would you? Yeah, oh, you've got Marcus, um, someone who I know is right. experienced with this so at the I'm, moment. Uh, I'm Mark Atkins. I've been in the Department of Psychiatry. And uh, I'm a rookie at this retirement thing. I retired 12 days ago. Um, <laughs> I haven't gone for a look yet, I'm not, you know, still dressing okay and all that. So, uh, the t-shirt has not come I have yet. a lot to learn, I'm, I'm working on it, but, um, you know, I just want to say something really quick as I'm listening to this amazing information, and, you know, I've been to a number of these, as I'm sure several of you have. If you're anything like me, my retention of these facts is next to zero, especially as they start piling up. Like I remember the last one, but I don't remember three of them. And that, and, and that gets back to the point that Jer Jerry was making um, and, and lots of people have made, which is, which is you know, make your appointments and so on. But also, I was really surprised at how uh, um, available and helpful people were in every single system that I dealt with. My own HR people in my department were extremely helpful to me. Uh, SIRS, um, not only the annual meetings, but as, as uh, I think Brenda mentioned, um, a phone call away, always there. I just called them not too long ago, like 12 days ago actually. Um, <laughs> And, and Social Security as well. That was the one thing that, that, as much as I thought I was tracking all this, and my wife was on top of it too, we kind of lost track of Medicare Part B because yeah. I'm 66. And so I, I don't remember what happened. She claims that she woke up one day and remembered it. That may be the case, or maybe we got a letter. I don't really know. But So there's, there's so many moving parts that I think 
these, these meetings are great, and I think SUAA is here for us, and they're not going to be here unless we're here. So um, we, we need people to keep an eye on this stuff for us. Um, so that's what I want to say. Now, in terms of the rehire, um, he, there's a couple of things that, that I found as a recent retiree. Number one, people have so much advice for me. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Every time someone hears that I retired, I get a little speech about what I should be doing with my life and what am I doing with my life and you know that kind how of about, stuff. How is retirement going? Yeah, well, there's a little of that too. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's, there's a lot. There's a lot of this pressure that I'm supposed to have all these plans and all that. The second thing is there's an enormous amount of misinformation out there. It's unbelievable the number of people who will come up and tell me this or tell me that or it's this way or that way. And, and again, I can't keep track of all this stuff, so I just call up again and I say, so here's the thing about the rehire. This is the one thing that I think is probably as confusing as anything. I am thinking about coming back. Um, there, as you probably all know, there, we can make no, there can be no arrangements implicit or explicit about our return. Um, so I think we all know that. Having said that, I was talking at one of these, one of the workshops, I was talking to the head of HR for the university, and I said, so let me just ask you, so, so I guess I need to move out of my office, is that, is that right? He said, no, nah, don't be ridiculous. He said, we know, we, know, we know how this works. So that's the level of confusion there is around this stuff, right? And, and, and Brenda was super helpful to me when I, you know, Two days before I'm retiring, we get four manuscripts back on a rise and revise and resubmit for my grad student. And they're looking at me like, you're not going to be there for 60 days, you know, and all that. So anyway, my code name is Igor. They uh, all contact me as Igor. And I, but Brenda was really, really helpful. And that's another thing, another resource that's just a phone call. This was an email, and then she called me on a Saturday. Just, you know, we don't have to make these decisions ourselves. We don't have to keep all this stuff in our heads. I can't do that. I'm not a finance person. So... These, you know, I just really recommend that you make these calls. In terms of the rehire, my understanding, um, this 60 day separation, I first thought that I couldn't step on campus, which turns out not to be true. As I'm here, Brenda tells me, I hope, uh, that's not true. But, um, but, but I can't do any university business, which of course is a little bit ridiculous when you're in a position, a faculty position. Um, what's distinguished between university business versus working on a manuscript university business, well, it is what I do for a living, so I guess, but no, not really, and so it's some easy stuff. I mean, unfortunately, I can't go to faculty meetings anymore, okay, so I, I, I'm okay with that, but, uh, yeah. and so I'll, I'll just stop at this point and say, so, so what, the way I understand it, and I'm 12 days into it, is that, you know, you got to be smart about it. Don't do anything egregious. Um, stay away from as much as you can. Um, communicate via Gmail and, and, and let people know that, that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not on campus. I got an email from the IRB regarding one of our protocols asking me a question. And my email back was, I have retired. You need to go deal with somebody else, which was a pleasure to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many advantages. So I, I don't know, Brenda. No, I think that's anything else. I think that's just. <laughs> Um, we're going to be almost out of time. I'm going to finish on time because I know many of you are on your lunch break and you'll be leaving. Here's a really quick one. Are the 3% annual increases also protected under the language of the Constitution or can the legislators go after that? And I would say it's protected because it was included in the Supreme Court bill no. that what? Technically it is not. So, the things to keep in mind with the 3% increase are that you and I fund it. So a portion of our contribution, we contribute 8% of salary, that's us in portable and traditional. 6.5% um, of that contribution funds the actual pension. 1% is set aside to fund survivors' benefits or, um, or in the portable plan it just kind of disappears into the sauce, which I'll talk about later. A half percent funds the automatic annual increase. So, uh, in pension reform, one of the discussions or one of the provisions was that we reduce the, the state was going to reduce our contribution from 8% to 7.5%. And they were going to do that so that they could then 
theoretically change the 3% increase because you and I are funding that benefit. There's a portion of your account that's set aside and funded. If that money is there and that funding resource is there, how can the 3% change? Because the Constitution said, I'm, well, I'm going to I'm, throw I'm this gonna, to I'm Bill just Beecham, say that, that, because uh, this is an interpretation yeah, I of the law. Well, um, Bill is the, um, on our board and he follows the legislative action for I'm Postal. sure that if that was the case, if there was an effort to reduce it, Sue would go to court uh, on people. your behalf. <laughs> uh, I can't, of course, predict what would happen when well, you that did court, happen but we would court, but we would go to court, yeah. and we have gone to court, right. and much of the, the pr preservation of your pension has been preserved through SUA action, uh, which is, a, is the uh, uh, legal uh, fund of SUA. Uh, which is a separate because SUA, your SUA membership, but that's an additional plug for membership. Uh, join SUA so to protect your 3%. Uh, I would say you will hear and I can expect that there will be constitutional amendments. Some of the politicians are talking about it already. And the question, and there are some bills coming through. You have your interpretation and then the lawyer for SUAA has a different interpretation. What happens when that? You raise funds and you go to court. So in the bill that came through a few years ago, there was a, a Culleton type bill. There's going to be a choice of you get your 3% on this and this and this, or you get no increases in the future funded in the pension. You can expect things like that. They will be rebutted because those are two poor choices, both of which reduce what you otherwise have been promised. Now, the difficulty is traditional plan, self-managed plan, tier two plan. You came in with different contracts. This is also covered by state and federal contract law. So there isn't one simple answer. <clears throat> Remember though, people talk about this, tell them the problem isn't the pension, it's the debt. The debt is 95% of the reason the state has trouble. They can't solve it by nibbling into our 3%. He doesn't agree with me, I can see. Well, the, the other part of the, uh, that equation is that within pension reform, the Supreme Court did, in the ruling, specifically state that the Constitution can be amended and changed, but the Constitution that was in place when we were hired is what is binding. So they can change it for future hires. Future so hires can definitely be changed, but retroactive, no. Correct. So the, the, it's, I love the legal language that we're under because it's one phrase, our pension cannot be diminished or impaired. That's it. It doesn't say 3%, you know, contract this, number of years that, percents this. It's just it cannot be diminished or impaired. So how you were hired, and what you subsequently agreed to, if offers were made, which plan, which choices, that's a contract. Marsha, you want to say something? Yeah, I, 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 you need a mic. Oh, oh. oh. Well, where is that? Where? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say that. I'm on the SUAA board as well. Um, I want to say that the, the, the one moving target of, in all this is always the health care because that is something that is continually negotiated. And so, I mean, they can't take the fact that we're supposed to get free health care if we did the 20%, but nobody says what the quality of that health care would be. So, again, you know, we do need voice and we do need to pay attention to health care because that is the one caveat in, in all this that I think is most uh, the most vulnerable thing uh, that we that we look at and uh, SUAA is is on it. I mean we can't always guarantee that we'll be able to change everything but certainly some oversight is better than none and I think uh, just looking at our democracy today I think you're well aware of just staying, sitting and doing nothing is certainly not okay. So SUAA is here to watch out for all this on your behalf. That's what we do. And 
the health insurance, the choices for tier three, these we're watching, not just for people who've already retired, but those still working, those being recruited and hired today. We care about all that, and it is the agency, it's a group that is protecting our interests. Um, by my timer, which is about to go, we have five minutes left. Um, Larry, watch Hmm? Larry. And I'm saying, who had, lots of last words here. I, I just had one question to piggyback off of what we were just discussing. Um, do we know who among our um, politicians are advocating for or against uh, changes to our increases? We have primaries coming up, and it'd be nice for us to maybe help in this Come regard. Come talk to me afterwards. I wouldn't okay. say that in public. Um, I think, though, uh, SUAA is nonpartisan. Uh, it's it's state universities, community colleges, regional colleges, statewide. So uh, in regions, we have downstate, uh, predominantly Republican. We have regional universities where the main employer, the only employer in town is the university. So it's a very strong public advocacy, but it really tries to stay out of endorsing someone like in the, the primaries. Um, whoever, you know, whoever, it, it doesn't always fall the way you think in terms of Republican and Democrat because of those community colleges and regional campuses in Republican districts. So, so I, tries to balance and be non-partisan. Do you want to say something, Bill? Our legislator. Good. Yeah, I think it's important that each one of us who are SUA members uh, has the opportunity to link up with your state representative or your state senator. Uh, SUA does support uh, attendance at various fundraising events uh, that legislators have, regardless of whether they're Republican or Democrat. Uh, and this is an opportunity uh, to go to those events and say, SUA is watching, uh, SUA is concerned. Uh, also, just meeting your state legislator is an important thing and letting them know that there is a group of people out there who are concerned about pensions and getting that message that Brenda uh, mentioned across that it's not a pension problem in the state, it's a debt problem. It's not your and my pension that's holding the problem, it's the fact that the state legislature did not pay into the system and created a huge debt that they're now trying to figure out how we are going to pay it off when it's their problem. But that can be that can be done on an individual basis, and that's the best way to work. Yeah, with. while we're passing the mic over to this person here, um, the sewer action. You know, you get something saying it's a fifty-dollar ticket or a hundred-dollar ticket to a, attend a fundraiser. If you are an SUA member and have donated to SUA action, they will pay for your ticket to attend that event, and you go then not as yourself, but you're helping our group. We are very much in favor of higher education funding as well, not just retirees, but the whole university system has been cut badly, as you know. Question, yeah, comment. It's, uh, yeah, it's a kind of a question, and it's kind of like a proposition. Um, you know, some of you have bigger salaries than you know, I've heard people in maintenance, and they're saying uh, that you know they're going to re when they retire, they're going to take away part of the social security, and I just don't think it's right. I, I really think we need to get because some of us who have lower salaries, and they're they're telling us you know they're going to take uh, once we retire, they're going to take a portion of social security like we're not entitled. You know that's wrong, especially when. The, the, what do you call it, the top levels of what, what is uh, affordable living, it's wrong to begin with. Every, all, we all know our salaries do not go up, but the cost of living does go up. 
So that's why I think there's a lot of kind of concern and sad faces in this room, You're which right. makes me, we gotta get energized, we gotta get involved. Where are the forms to, so that we can all sign up for SUA? Because this has been the most comprehensive information I've received. So now, that I have received. You couldn't have said it better. It, yes, but, it, but also let's everyone. fight for this thing of getting Social Security, we paid into it, let's Let's get it. Let's get it back. And one more thing, you know, uh, we must, those people that have threaded this process and done it successfully, help, the, help others. We need to do this more because I, I've heard so many crazy things. Some people do get reimbursement for vacation and others uh, for sick days and other people don't. I received a notice that, that said, you, I'm not so, I won't be able to purchase time back. So those are all individual, but certainly support what you said. Um, ironically, our state, our SERS, has a lower average retirement than the teachers, because the teachers are in a union just for teachers, and the rest of the staff are in other unions. So uh, we are well aware of the demographics of the SERS retiree, and you've worked for that pension, and we're here to protect it. With that, I'm going to remind you, you couldn't have said it better, please sign, turn it in. Um, if you fill it in and hand it as you leave, uh, we'll take care of the rest. Um, we have your emails, we will let you know about the HR events. We hope you join and then you will get the newsletter that Sonia does. And I want to thank Jerry Bauman, Sonia Booth. And all of those, all of you who contributed questions. We didn't get to all of them. But thank you. And just remember retirement can be fun. <laughs>